Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to worship on this second Sunday of Easter. A few announcements this morning. As you notice, the food is, is still in the back. They'll be, we'll be uh, donating that over toward the YWCA at the beginning of this coming week um, for the YWCA. And uh, again, for all of you, thank you. You all, have, again, wonderful job of doing that. Thank you. I appreciate it. Next week, uh, Ruby Wilds will be leading service. Uh, and she's coming, she was here for Palm Sunday. She'll be leading us in worship next Sunday. So look forward to that. In the coming weeks, you'll be getting information on our kind of fun drive for the uh, ecumenical, or sorry, not the ecumenical home, but the uh, home in Cain, the Lutheran home. We're going to begin that in May, and again, any contributions toward that will be going directly to the home for repairs and replacements of equipment that need to be done there at the home. More information will be coming out toward that and how we can donate or how we can help. I will apologize earlier, I will look like I am an insect flying all over the place as I am preaching and playing today. So. Please bear with me if you see me jumping around. I promise it's, everything's okay. I'm not you know, having a fit up here. Everything's going well. Are there any other announcements today? Okay, then let us prepare for worship. Let us begin. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the fountain of living water, the rock who gave us birth, our light and our salvation. Amen. Amen. Let us come into the light, the revealing light of God. God of grace and glory, 
You have brought us through the night of sin into the light of Jesus' resurrection. Yet our lives are still shadowed by sin. They make us alive in Christ our God. make us new as you make all things new. Rescue us from you and the gloom of sin. Renew us in grace and restore us to live in your holiness. Through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Rejoice with all creation around God's throne. The light of the risen Christ puts to flight all evil deeds, washes away sins, restores innocence to the fallen, casts out hate, brings peace, and humbles earthly pride. Jesus Christ loves you and frees you from your sins by his blood. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen.
There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will now read responsibly Psalm 133, God your Lord. How good and how pleasant it is when kindred life, when kindred life live together in unity. It's like fine oil on the head, flowing down upon the beard, upon the beard of Aaron, flowing down upon the collar of his robe. It is like the dew of Aaron blowing down upon the hills of Zion. For there the Lord has commanded the blessing, life forevermore. The second reading is from 1 John chapter 1. We declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. His life was revealed, and we have seen it and testified to it and declare to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. We declare to you what we have seen and heard, so that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from Him and proclaim to you that God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light, as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus his Son cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteousness, and he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to be God. God. stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord Jesus, saw his hands and saw his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord Jesus. He said to them, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the disciples, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, 
to put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side. I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise you, Lord Christ. We pick up today in John's Gospel, right after Mary Magdalene has announced to the Apostles, I have seen the Lord and told the gathered disciples what he had said to her. Now in John, a whole week will elapse in this Gospel when we catch back up with the Apostles. What do you think happened in that week? John doesn't say. But for the disciples of Jesus, you can bet it had been a rough week. We can assume at this point those who plotted Jesus' death had learned about his body missing from its tomb. You can see that they have probably begun spitting conspiracy theor theories everywhere on what had happened to him. The soldiers that were guarding the tomb they would have gone back to their command to try to explain why that tomb was open. They would have had to try to explain the inexplicable. The apostles themselves are locked up in a room somewhere in fear of the Jews, fear that they may be next, even though Mary has brought them the truth of Jesus' resurrection. Yet in all this confusion surrounding them, Jesus enters the locked room, probably startled. And then he calms them with simple words, Peace be with you. Of course, all the apostles are there, minus Thomas. And all day they rejoice, seeing the risen Lord. And the Lord brings the Holy Spirit and sends them forth. Later, when we find Thomas has returned, you got to feel for him. I can sympathize with Thomas. Now, he's called doubting Thomas by many. But can we see ourselves in him? within his reaction to the resurrection, and the apostles claim to seeing him again amongst them in his absence. You can almost hear him say, no, no, not me. I won't believe it until I put my fingers in the holes in his hands, in my hand in his side. Then I'll believe. In reading this, our first reaction is, bad Thomas, what a bad disciple. Or it's disbelief. Recently, in a discussion with my wife, she had reminded me of an old saying her grandfather would say, believe nothing that you hear and only half of what you see. And we are brought up taught this. Seeing is believing. We experience this in most everything in our lives. Think of advertising. Come and see how this, <clears throat> this will better your life in most of any of the advertising we see in radio, in television, and on the internet. There isn't a moment where we're not invited to share the experiences of others to believe what they are telling us about this item. Well, I'll believe it when I see it. Yet we chide Thomas. How can he not believe and still be called an apostle, a disciple, the first fruits of the ministry? I mean, he had personally heard Jesus tell of his resurrection countless times. And he had heard the message that Mary and the other disciples speaking on Jesus' return. How can he still doubt? Sometimes we need to remember that we are visitors to the gospel, students to the lives and the ways of our Christian ancestors. I mean, we know how the resurrection played out because we can skip ahead 
to the good parts, the resurrection itself, the breathing of the Holy Spirit. In the person of Thomas, when Jesus has decided to change course and head to Lazarus earlier in the Gospels, when Lazarus was dying, it was Thomas. In his pragmatic, very simple, maybe hard-headed nature, to agree with Jesus, speaking to the other disciples, to return to where those who wished to kill Jesus were. Let us go. Let us go forth and die with him. It's easy to look upon Thomas in the upper room and think of him as the odd one out or a bad believer. But is Thomas so much so different than any of us? How would we have reacted? Would it have been a reaction of envy? Well, how come he came when I was not here? I just don't believe it. Or maybe with doubt. I didn't see it or feel it or hear it or touch it, so therefore it never happened until I see it. Thank goodness for Thomas and for us. Jesus came back again to reveal himself once more so Thomas could say, My Lord and my God. But Jesus continues as the great teacher in his final words that he speaks in today's gospel. He speaks the words we have heard many, many times. Blessed are those who have not seen yet believe. Jesus, in speaking those words 2,000 years ago or more, is addressing them to them and addressing them back to us. You see, faith is something more. In faith, believing, you see. A faith in Jesus is seeing the ways we are blessed and knowing God is working in our lives. There are no circumstances or coincidences. God is driving the life of the believer. Yet, as we look at our lives, we see it as good luck or good fortune or circumstance. We expect large gestures or miracles from God to show his presence in our lives. Remember, Jesus said this generation requires signs and miracles. Burning bushes and moving mountains. Diseases cured in an instant, wars ended, and peace reigning over the whole world. And God still can do these things with a thought or a wink or a nod. But what we must remember is that even if he chooses in his will to leave bushes alone and leave the mountains where they stand, he is still God and is working in our lives. That in our hearts, our hearts are his well, even when we're troubled, and even when times are hard. In keeping our hearts and minds and eyes on him, we will see his will in our lives. I know in my own walk, since the beginning of this journey that I'm on, I'm constantly reminded of his presence and his active participation in all of our lives. God keeps me moving forward, even when it's hard. He provides substance through small workings by working through others. He has kept my family and I safe through these trying times. He's provided many gifts and blessings in the form of food and shelter, of companionship and guidance, of love and support, all brought by him and caused by him, but provided by others here on earth. If we choose to see him and credit him for providing them. Believing is seeing Christ in our brothers and sisters and honoring our Lord within them. Believing is seeing and recognizing God's mighty works in the world and caring for them as he intended us to do. Believing is seeing as we share God's word and the promise of salvation with our fellow travelers. They see Christ within us and accept him as Savior and Lord. Believing is seeing when we look with his eyes and see his will in our lives, guiding us toward the commission he has given us. As our risen Lord and Savior Jesus Christ said to Thomas in that upper room, I will say again to you today, echoing the great teacher as he taught us, blessed are those who have not seen him yet have come to believe. May we, the body of Christ, his church, go forth in the world as the Father sent him, 
And let us continue to see him working in our lives until that day when we can see him face to face in glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy and grace. You proclaim the blessings of life forevermore. Like dew upon the mountains, refresh your creation. Restore waters, cleanse the air, and provide, revitalize the moisture to parched land. Give your whole creation the promise of new life. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You direct the nations, O oh God. Guide all in authority that they shepherd their peoples in the ways of your love. Defeat in us our faults to war. Bestow the peace of Christ upon those in authority and breathe upon them the Holy Spirit. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You place within the heart of the church a spirit of sharing. Give us the power of your generous spirit that will provide for the needs of others. For Mary Colleen, Patricia Wall, Betty Frelly, Maverick Smith, Doris Baker, Denise Dolphin, Debbie Sherp, Dennis Steele, Larry Shine, Holly Bernardi, family of Mary Lou Berkey, Todd Harrison, Alex Nemeth, Marlene Johnson, Cindy Soley, Gregory Buckner, Lois Schultz, Bruce Monti, Joyce Maxwell, Marlene, Marlene Markiowski, Steve Cavallaro, Mary Lou Phillips, Andy Pam Boy, Reverend Gail Zacherson, her daughter Cindy and family, Jeff Sherwin, Chip Giordano, the family and friends of Sandy McAndrew, and anyone we name. Announce your peace to those who are lonely, hurting, suffering, or afraid. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You give us fellowship with one another in this faith community. Shine the light of the risen Christ in our life together. So we live in love with one another and our joy may be complete. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You share the gift of eternal life. In thanksgiving and remembrance, Recall the lives and gifts of those who now live in endless joy. Unite us with them in resurrection hope. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Merciful God, you open wide your hand and satisfy the need of every living thing. You have set the space before us. Open our hands to receive it. Open our hearts to embrace it. Open our lives to live it. We pray this through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Peace to you through our Lord Jesus Christ. When our congregation gathered for the celebration of Holy Communion, we heard again the story of God's mighty acts and of love shown us in the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. With thanksgiving, remember that in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all the drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for remembrance of me. We're given assurance of our Lord's presence through the gift of his Holy Spirit. Now we bring to you the same bread to life in the same cup of blessing that you may be strengthened through your participation in the body of Christ. Lord, remember us your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread.
God, the Lord us from evil. For thy is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
Make this one with all your people. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love for the world and continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Lord. The Lord be with you. Also with you. Let us bow our heads and pray for God's blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. May the Lord 